another a speaker yesterday made the comment that he wasn't really even going to talk a lot about new presses because he said in India you only buy used. Well, I think that's an unfair statement to make. Undoubtedly, there is some truth to that statement, but as you take a look at the future of the Indian printing industry, there's no doubt that increasing efficiency, increasing quality, increasingly consistent standards will become more and more important to your industry. The days in which putting six or seven operators on a press and not really being able to track the consistency of their product, those days will come to an end. You'll find that the competition will no longer allow that sort of, sort of business. And so at that point, you'll be taking a look at the future, the way it's unfolded around the globe for the printing industry. You know, originally, presses had ink keys that were turned by hand, and I know you can still find a few of those here in India, where people are, are constantly making manual adjustments. But it wasn't that long ago that we made the transition to servo-controlled ink keys, and that really opened up a lot of opportunities in the printing industry. The first thing that we did was we controlled those servo motors by scanning the printing plates themselves and presetting the ink keys of the printing press by evaluating what content was going to be on the plate. By 20 years ago, by the mid-1990s, it was possible to take information from the RIP, from the pre-press data, from the raster image processor, and use that information to preset the ink keys rather than relying on scanning of the plates, which not only was slow and rather inaccurate, but brought in the potential that you might damage the plate during the scanning process. So that process of moving the pre-pressed data out to the press room used a file format called PPF, or print production format. And in the late 1990s, it was a, a growing area, but right around the turn of the century, people realized that PPF was itself too limited and that they needed to move into a, a new way of thinking about that data. And so we saw the introduction of the job description format, or JDF. Today in India, I know that there is very little use of equipment that is JDF compatible. But I assure you, you will find the need to introduce this technology. If you're going to print manufacture, and you're going to do so to make money, there is no better technology to make money than through the use of this type of automation system. Not because it reduces manpower, but because it improves communication between all levels of operation and allows you to, to track and, and evaluate your production processes in a way that you could never possibly do without that type of technology. So the JDF file is written in XML computer code, which is its main difference from PPF, but it also enables two-way communication. So instead of simply taking pre-pressed data and dumping it out onto the press, now you've got the ability for the press run speeds to be tracked and for that information to communicate back. For the press settings, uh, how much air am I using? Uh, well, how are the ink keys set? What's the delivery setup? What's, uh, how, how are the blowers configured on the press? All this information can be reported back to the main computer system and tracked. And so what we're going to focus on today are two areas of interface in the JDF model. And that's between pre-press systems and the press console, as well as we'll marginally talk about the connection between the management information systems out to the press console. It allows us to create a very sophisticated press room, one that we've never seen before. This ability to put the press itself on the network communicate to the press console, and then have all the various units of the press also electronically linked to the console so that all these performance parameters can be tracked. That allows us to collect data, to collect runtime data, to know always you know, what is happening on the press and to be able to monitor that information without having to stand next to the press. You can be in your office, you can be at home. And you can look at this information live through the internet if you, in, uh, if you invest in this sort of system to see what is going on. 
So this JDF compatibility allows us to look at presses that introduce whole new ways of printing, new ways of controlling the process, new ways of making sure that repeating jobs are done in a, in a way that minimizes delays and increases efficiency and produces the best possible match with the product that came before. We call these things intelligent presses. So today's new generation of intelligent presses is more than just JDF, although certainly that's key to it. So JDF input, the ability for the press to take in this ink key data or to accept job ticket data so that the operator can see right on the press console what type of paper do I need? How large are the sheets of paper that I'm going to be running? What other types of information do I need to know? Um, then, what about the evaluation of the color? We've heard already from several speakers about monitoring color online, inside the press, or uh, with a press-adjacent uh, color scanner. Uh, the idea that we can not only scan the color to monitor its consistency throughout the press run, but this new concept that I mentioned yesterday, being able to analyze the color with spectral data, and then being able to use that data to match the appearance of color, even though we've changed the paper, even though we're printing on a different substrate than we did last time, but still getting that visual match because we're using spectral data. Uh, increasingly important, especially for brand owners. Defect recognition, while we're scanning for color, we can also be scanning for problems, for scratches, for voids, for missing errors, or as you saw in the Man Roland uh, uh, lecture, to actually know that you've got the wrong content on press, that a uh, type correction wasn't made. Uh, to be able to pull off what's called a smart shutdown, so that as the end of the run is coming up, you're actually depleting ink from areas of the press that won't need to be inked up for the very next run. So that's a tremendous time savings as well as a savings in consumables, in ink use. And then smart make ready, the ability to automate the changeover process between runs, <laughs> including automatic plate loading, which is a tremendous benefit. And auto start, the ability to reduce the amount of running around that the operators have to do at the beginning of the press run, the ability of the console to control more of the processes and to make these things happen in sequence so that there is less waste and less time involved in the startup of the press. So these innovations are coming from many manufacturers. Let's take a look at uh, six of the major manufacturers. Uh, I just recently added auto print to this list. Uh, we don't want to leave the, the home uh, developer of printing presses out of this, but we'll also talk about Heidelberg, KBA, Komori, Mandrola, and Mitsubishi. <clears throat> auto print, uh, 20 years of service to the printing industry here in India, uh, specializing in small format solutions. Uh, their major products include single color and multicolor presses, as well as a small format die cutter, an inkjet and printing table, and an offline inspection system. I think their, uh, their introduction of the offline inspection system is extremely interesting as well because it really shows the importance to printers of any size, this concept of being able to scan every sheet to check for defects. We're getting away from an industry in which it's okay to have a wide amount of variation and a, lar a large number of mistakes and wait for the customer to reject the job or to print the job and fill up the cartons and then have to go manually through the cartons and, and search out the pieces and try to spot check. As a manufacturing industry, we're no longer able to, to live like that. We need to be able to monitor defects during the printing process and to recognize problems as, as they occur. So the uh, Dion 450 Plus is their four color device from AutoPrint. Um, even though it's a small format press, it does have three form rollers per unit. You might normally expect on a press this size to only get two form rollers, but it's great to have three. Uh, improves their ability to print solids and heavy coverage. Uh, sensors for, to detect blanket jams, which is a very interesting innovation. Uh, sensors for, for detecting misfeeds and a centralized touch screen. Uh, another printing device that they have is an inkjet table. In this case, it's not typically used to print the entire sheet. Here we're talking about taking pre-printed shelves 
that have been printed with litho and then putting those shells on the table and dropping numbers, barcodes, other type of variable data on top of these pre-printed pieces. Uh, these types of inkjet tables have been around for a long time, but they're normally only uh, very small because they come from the envelope industry for addressing envelopes for, for mail uh, purposes. So to see something that uh, reaches the 660 millimeter print width is, is quite interesting. Um, and they've taken a, uh, the advantage of this table to not only to drop the inkjet image, but also as a convenient place to do slitting, creasing, and perforating. So a very interesting device there. All right, let's move on to some of the Western manufacturers. Um, Heidelberg, to begin with, they've got a new series of presses called the SX. The SX press series is at a lower cost than the SM or Speedmaster series, uh, but it uses much of the same technology. It doesn't run at quite the same press speed, doesn't have quite as many automation options, but it's their, uh, their lower cost model of entry for what is actually a very sophisticated press. So we've got the easy control color measurement system. It comes with the IntelliStart automation of the startup processes. It's compatible with their MIS system and as well as their pressure management system. Uh, you can order it in up to 10 units. Uh, you can drop a perfector in the middle, but you can get as few as two units. Of course, it comes with coders available. Um, and the SX model is an energy efficient press and compared to some of the other presses that are available. We really, I, I've been hearing more and more during the past two days, about how important energy consumption issues are in India. And I, I really wasn't quite aware to the extent that it's front of mind for people. Uh, that's something to keep in mind when you look at printing presses. You know, one of, the, one of the trends in press development has been towards individually servo controlled units so that there is no central drive shaft or, or chain driving uh, from a single power source. But the catch is when you put these individual servo motors on every unit, it, it can increase power consumption. So, you know, there's a, a pluses and minuses to that sort of change. If we take a look at the Connect Easy Control that Heidelberg offers with this SX Press, um, it's a press side spectro, so it's not built into the press. You take the sheets out of the delivery and scan them. Uh, it requires a special color bar uh, that Heidelberg supplies and the scanner only covers the color bar itself. It doesn't examine or defect recognition uh, of the work at all. Uh, it's a simple to use touchscreen interface. Uh, of course, it does automatic ink key adjustments, uh, closed loop so that uh, you can do uh, feedback to the press instantly. And it provides warning when the uh, uh, job is, is being asked to print colors that are actually out of gamut for the ink set that's available in the press. Uh, the IntelliStart automation that I mentioned earlier is a way of reducing the uh, manual traveling around the press at the beginning of the print run. Uh, Heidelberg says it can reduce the uh, job setup process by 70% worth of uh, less effort and it allows multiple setup processes to occur simultaneously which can really reduce uh, change over time between projects. The Pronect Press Center comes with this uh, large format wall screen. So if you're interested in, in the high end of the Heidelberg technology, uh, this is a very interesting uh, press center. It allows you to actually uh, see computer depictions of the press running and to see uh, the, what's happening in each unit of the printing press. Uh, but the technology from Heidelberg that I find the most interesting is the inline spectrophotometer for sheet fed presses. So there aren't too many press manufacturers offering this in press measuring of color. We are seeing this coming out more and more though. Um, Heidelberg says that among their commercial print customers, now fully half of the presses that they sell are equipped with this in press color measurement spectrophotometer system. Um, for those people who don't want to have in press, they can have a press side uh, control, and that is the image control next generation. I mentioned that yesterday. The advantage of this system is not only does it measure color bars, but it also measures in the work itself. You can control color from uh, actually looking at the content. 
Uh, automatic plate changing from Heidelberg includes the Autoplate Pro, which does two plates at a time, as well as the Autoplate XL, only available on the Speedmaster XL series, in which all plates are changed simultaneously. A, uh, another innovation that Heidelberg brought to the market, which has not spread to other manufacturers, is called Anacolor. And with Anacolor, you get rid of the ink keys completely. There is no zone control for inking. There's simply a, a, an analog uh, roller and a doctor blade metering the distribution of ink. Uh, there's no doubt that they're, that they're correct in their, in their statement that it reduces startup time and allows that ink to, uh, to come up to color very, very quickly. But I know from personal experience that many printers that do long run printing are concerned about what happens after 50,000 or 100,000 impressions if you have no zone control. Moving on to KBA, the Rapida series of sheet fed presses uh, is their uh, mainstay for the commercial printing community. They also have a smaller format machine called the Genius 52 UV. The new series of presses that uh, KBA is very excited about is the uh, Rapida 105 as well as the Rapida 106. The 105 is the new machine. Uh, the Rapida 106 just came out a few years ago uh, in their redesigned versions. They've had machines under that name for many years, but these are completely redesigned machines. Uh, they have the ability to print on paperboard and corrugated, so they go up to very thick substrates. Some of the software available with these presses, the intelligence for these presses includes Logotronic Professional. So here we see software that not only sends ink key information out to the press, but can communicate information, status information about the press back into the MIS systems through JDF uh, data. And uh, Logotronic Press Watch and Speed Watch allows you to monitor all the settings on the press and press speeds and keep track of that information, use it for evaluation of the uh, efficiency of your press operations. Qualitronic color control is from KBA, allows you to check your ink density and uh, your ink key adjustments. Uh, Qualitronic 2 is an inline sheet inspection system. So here we see this camera is mounted inside the press again. Uh, this system uh, does uh, sheet inspection only. It doesn't do color control. If you want color control, that's Densitronic PDF or Qualitronic PDF where it actually compares the, uh, the density and spectral data from the printed sheets directly back to the pre-pressed data in electronic format. So you're not measuring up against a set of density standards, you're actually measuring to the electronic work from pre-press. Uh, KBA offers three different forms of automatic plate changing. They're semi-automatic, fully automatic, and simultaneous plate changing. Uh, the fully automatic, does two units at a time, but can still change all the plates on all the units in under three minutes. Uh, whereas the simultaneous plate change does everything in less than one minute, all plates change in less than one minute. Uh, a very interesting system that comes with SPC is called Drivetronic Plate Ident. And this system can actually scan a, color, a uh, barcode on the leading edge of the plate make sure that the right plate is being mounted on the right unit and use that information to actually register the plates so that the plates are automatically mounted in perfect registration and you're assured that the right plate is always going on to the right unit. <clears throat> Drivetronic SPC is this ability to rotate the uh, printing plate units individually even though there's a drive shaft driving the press you can kick the plates or kick the uh, units out of uh, transmission with that drive unit and then spin them individually. That allows you to uh, load the plates automatically uh, simultaneously, but it also allows you to do things like clean the press units while the press is still running. So if you're only using four out of six units, you can be washing up two units while you're running four units. Very interesting uh, a capability for print shops that do spot color uh, work. It also means that on ultraviolet equipped presses, you're able to clean the press without the need to shut down and uh, turn off the lamps because, of course, the warm-up time on the lamps uh, can be an issue. You're talking about being a large format printer. 
perhaps in packaging or some of the other publication areas where very large format presses are used. Uh, the Drivetronic feeder is an innovation from KBA. And as part of that, their sensoric infeed system replaces the uh, side adjustments that we normally would see on a printing press. Once you get to the sheets to be of such a large size, the normal vacuum driven side adjustments are uh, uh, less effective. And so with the new KBA system, it actually waits until the sheet is engaged by the gripper bar, and then the gripper bar itself moves the sheet from side to side to adjust to the lateral print position. Moving on to Kimori, uh, multiple configurations are available of its Lithrone sheet fed press series, and they also have a small format series called Spica. Uh, and of course, they acquired the Chambon press, uh, packaging press series many years ago. Um, Kamori describes the Lithone, Lithrone SX as the world's most advanced self-learning press. And of course, it's talking about its software its automation uh, that runs the uh, front, of this, front end of the system. So KHS is the software for the press console. The new version of it is the AI or advanced <coughs> intelligence version of the software. And this does things like uh, reading in the data that's being scanned by the press side spectrophotometer and getting that information into the press faster than before, reducing startup time. It also allows you to do things like track your maintenance activities and tell you the amount of time or number of sheets remaining until you're scheduled for maintenance on certain portions of the press. And uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, this is one of the systems that can add ink at the end of a run or remove ink at the end of a run so that you are closer to being perfectly set up for the next run. And that reduces uh, paper waste as well as ink consumption and change over time. Uh, the internal cameras for the Komori system include the print quality assessment system, which is an RGB tri-stimulus camera. Uh, tracking for color deviation, as well as looking for defects on printed sheets. And then they have a spectral version of that as well. It's not just RGB, but it's spectral data. But this is a near-line system. It's not inside the press, it's a near-line scanner. Uh, oh, and an interesting thing about the, uh, the uh, PDC-SX is that it not only scans color, but it also can check registration of the sheets and that information automatically feeds back to the press. So it's not just closed loop color, it's also closed loop registration. Uh, Komori is uh, very excited about their new HUV system. We heard a lot of talk about, H, about uh, ultraviolet inks and coatings earlier today. With HUV, we're talking about a new system that uses only a single bulb at the end of the press. And this high energy bulb is said to be able to dry all the inks and all the coating uh, in one blast uh, from 89 centimeters. And I've been told that many buyers are buying this press in a perfecter configuration so that that sheet comes out of the delivery printed on both sides, uh, covering a, a massive 64 page signature. And you can have it automatically slit on the way out so that you don't have such a large sheet to fold. Now you're folding two half sheets. Uh, the Man Roland PCOM press count, uh, console was one of the earliest forms of the intelligent press automation. Uh, it works in conjunction with PrintNet, which is their networking and integration platform. Among the software available for PCOM is the Press Monitor, which is software that displays the press and job status as well as historical data about that press and previous jobs from that customer. When used with Press Manager Perfect, <clears throat> Perfect 2.0. Uh, this PDF uh, PCOM press system can uh, use JDF input to set up the press, to set up the inking, uh, the feeder, the delivery, the air settings, so it can really automate uh, the changeover process. And of course, you can imagine how powerful this is for repeat runs. When a job comes back, you already know how you successfully ran that job the first time, and the press is automatically set up for that. Uh, if you are not yet ready for JDF automation, Man Roland has a system called Press Manager Smart, uh, which does allow you to use PPF files, uh, and then it can allow you to upgrade to JDF later on. Uh, also available from, 
uh, man rolling in terms of monitoring color and scanning for defects. We've got Color Pilot, which is a scanning densitometer. It's an offline system. Um, and then in line inside the press, Color Pilot, which is a density system, uh, as well as the inline uh, Color Pilot for spectral data. Uh, and then the same system can not only check for color, it can also monitor registration and maintain uh, accurate registration during the print run. The inline inspector is a high resolution camera system they've just come out with, and this is uh, able to track higher data, higher resolution data than ever before, uh, verifying the accuracy of type all the way down to four point. So if you're doing any packaging work and pharmaceutical areas, uh, being able to check and flag failed sheets for that type of work is extremely important. And then the inline sorter works in conjunction with a system like that. Uh, you see this in, in many manufacturers are coming out with something like this now, where when sheets are caught by the inline inspector that these sheets are bad, yes, you have the option that comes with the equipment of actually flagging the sheets and sticks a little piece of tape onto the edge of the sheet, but even better is this ability to have a waste dumpster right in the press so that these sheets are automatically kicked right into the waste bin and collected. And so the sheets that are in the delivery are known to be good sheets. There are no bad sheets ever in the delivery, which means that that sheet pile comes out perfectly square and is ready to go right out into the binary for feeding directly into the folder or other post-press post processes. Moving on to Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi has the Diamond Series, including their latest uh, press in the Diamond Series, the V3000LX, which is an extremely fast machine running at 16,500 impressions per hour. Uh, it comes with the IPC3, or the Intelligent Press Console, its latest version, which automates processes, as we've spoken about with other uh, manufacturers, including the presetting of press functions, ink, water, uh, press startup, color control. Uh, connects to the IPC2 server for JDF connectivity and allowing uh, all this pre-press data to flow through the Max Net or Mitsubishi digital networking system. Quick start inking on startup uh, provides uh, optimized optimization of ink volume and then smart print end. Once again, this idea that as the run comes to its end, you need to be balancing the ink distribution and preparing for your next run. So it presets the next job before this job even finishes. Uh, the Diamond Color Navigator from Mitsubishi was an award-winning uh, device that uh, allows operators to do color adjustment with less knowledge of color theory and less experience. So this makes it easier uh, than ever before for uh, press operators to get the correct color. And uh, it works in conjunction with a near-line scanning sp spectrophotometer called the MCCS. And then, of course, Mitsubishi also offers an in-press spectrophotometer, which they say was the first combined color control and sheet inspection system on the market, uh, looking at every sheet for 100% inspection. Uh, the simul chain system from Mitsubishi is another one of these options to provide individual servo controlled motors to rotate the press units independently of each other, allowing plates to be simultaneously changed or that some plates can be changed while the press itself is, is being washed up. And then they also have a low energy system that is new for the drying of ultraviolet inks and coatings, the Eco UV dryer, uh, said to reduce electric consumption by two thirds. So to sum it up, properly maintain these money saving intelligent presses can reduce your waste and shorten your make ready times. Uh, just as, as important as your ability to maintain very high quality and consistent print production, as well as track the activity that's going on in the press room and track the need for maintenance on your presses. Uh, and all of this improves your efficiency and allows you to provide better service to your customers. So with that, I'll turn things back over to my compatriot, Jim, and thank you very much. Thank you, Hal. Uh, I'll get set up here momentarily. We're gonna 
stay in the press room, but we're going to shift over to some digital aspects of this. So get that going momentarily.